Go to the screen. Airbnb founder says that travel will never be the same. We should have known this, but yeah, travel will never be the same. Travel will never be the same. Yeah, I guess so. Um, I think we've all come to a realization that, or I think some people have, some people haven't, some people are still kind of, you know, holding on to this idea that somehow maybe you should have had that think. You should have maybe, you would have been allowed to think like that. You I have more sympathy for you in March right when it kind of felt as if like oh yeah it's just gonna be a couple more weeks and then we'll go back to normal but it's been six months already effectively right um of continual disruption i'd say that because you know we heard of COVID. i was aware of covid from january right and then by february march places were already starting to lock down so it's been with us for a while and it's like you know we're essentially going into the second half of 2020 and it doesn't look like anywhere in the western hemisphere is going to go back to normal anytime soon so we have to kind of put ourselves we have to kind of come to realization that we're going to live in a far in a much in a different world than what we're used to prior right things are going to be changed for the better i guess i'm a big fan of what i'm seeing at the moment with bars and club culture i think for the most part or bar culture for the most part i think allowing some bars to allow people to stand outside in the front carry drinks around with them is really good um it's going to maybe um allow people to communicate more hang out more maybe turn into a bit more of a metropolitan vibe let people just hold up inside in some sweaty carpet filled pub somewhere that's a good thing um i think the idea that people go and shop now People aren't going to shop frivolously, right? Before the frivolous kind of shop to go pick up a pack of crisps isn't the thing. You go and do your weekly shop so you can minimize the amount of time you're spending in a shop in a supermarket surrounded by loads of people. You go, you you know, you do your weekly shop, you leave, you come, you come back out again. Um, that's pretty cool. And just maybe the saving of the money, right? Not being so uh, materialistic and, you know, essentially drowning yourselves in uh, retail therapy in order to kind of, you know, distract yourself from your problems. That's a good thing. But the travel industry is one that's really going to suffer, isn't it, going forward. You can definitely see that not really being the same again, um, especially when it comes to traveling to parts of like Southeast Asia. They've suffered a damage in reputation that's probably going to be felt for decades to come in it in terms of repairing um, the image of China, for instance, right, to the outside world is going to be very, very difficult. So they're going to have to do a lot of work in ensuring, you know, tourism um, comes back to China in some way, shape or form. And obviously Airbnb um, plays a really integral part in people's travel arrangements. You know, I've used it for the best part of, you know, I don't know, five years or so or maybe more um and they've done a lot of cuts at the moment i think they've fired you know let go of a few people from different offices around the world and essentially the ceo has been um or the founder has been really candid about the prospects of airbnb going forward and he kind of detailed this in this sort of post i got here at the moment from axios it's titled airbnb ceo travel may never be the same i'll read a couple of paragraphs to you now um, I'll link the article in the show notes. It says the following. Um, Airbnb co-founder Brian Chesky told Axios in an interview that global travel may never be may never fully recover, that he sees a future where people travel much more within their own countries, possibly for longer stays. He says, driving the news, I will go on the record to say that travel will never, ever go back to the way it was pre-COVID. It just won't. Chesky told us via Zoom from his home in San Francisco. There are sometimes months when decades of transportation happens. No, there are sometimes months when decades of transformation happen, which is true. Um, I think I've, I've said that already. I think we, I'm, we're, I'm kind of, you're kind of seeing it happen. You saw it happen maybe post lockdown. A lot of people kind of escaped from the busy cities to go and you know live in their uh, townhouse outside of the city in the countryside somewhere or to go and stay with family that live in a smaller town or to go and rent an airbnb somewhere i've, I've heard of people doing that in the states especially they rent down an airbnb in the middle of the woods with a couple of friends to kind of connect with nature uh, become one with oneself do some exercise chill meditate relax just kind of unplug that's the thing now, I think that person or that group of friends that God does that, it's very unlikely you're going to have that experience of spending a prolonged period of time in the woods, having that experience of being connected with nature and then come back to civilization and just be okay with, you know, getting on the packed train somewhere. It's going to change something about the way you approach life in general. And it should obviously approach, def it definitely will change the way you approach holidays. Because I think there was a thing, I think I remember this being a conversation I had with a few friends where there was this idea that Wanderlust, being, being able to travel further and to go to you know many more countries than your friends was somehow a bad was like a badge of honor right and that was the only way to enjoy your holidays was to go to like a far-flung place somewhere um the further the better the more luxurious the better but i think lockdown what it's basically done is it's concentrated it's basically told us to recalibrate or to maybe uh yeah to recalibrate what we kind of value right 
and it's really made us focus on what we actually want out of life. And most people, once lockdown is over, aren't necessarily longing to go to the pub, aren't necessarily longing to go buy a jacket from Zara. What they actually want is to be able to go and hug their friends, kiss their mum on the cheek, um, you know, um, whatever, right? Go to a club somewhere, go to a gig, watch a movie in the cinema. That's all they want. They don't really, they're not bothered about going to Ibiza. They're not bothered about going out, hanging out in some weird place somewhere, right? They just want to go and connect with their friends. So I think that appreciation, that level of kind of sentiment is something that's going to last, I think. I don't think it's just going to go back to normal people. It's going to be like, ah, whatever, fuck it, I don't really give a shit. It's going to last going forward. So I think that's a really, really good thing. Um, but it's definitely going to affect travel. That's going to make people think, you know what? I don't need to go to a far flung place to have some um, alone friendship time with my friends. We can go and rent an amazing house somewhere in the middle of Devon, you know, bring some drinks, play some music and hang out and have just as much fun. We don't need to go to Barcelona. We don't need to go to, you know, Thailand. We don't need to go to Brazil to do these things. You can just do it all locally. And I've always think that's going to, I've always had this assumption that's going to change because a lot of my friends in my social circle are moving out of London and going to different places, parts of the UK, which would have never happened pre-COVID. Pre-COVID, everyone was talking about going to Berlin, right? Going to go live in, I don't know, in Georgia, going to go live in Paris, going to go live in Madrid and whatever it may be, right? But now people are like, you know what? I don't really need that. I just need to go live somewhere that's a little bit low key, that maybe is a bit more dialed down, a little bit more of a slower pace of life, just so I can kind of connect and get back to what I actually love. So it continues. It says here, um, Chesky says, um, he said, um, Chesky, who said travel has changed um, more tectonically then during the Great Recession of 2018, 2008 story, said Airbnb data shows these trends. He says, people are not getting on airplanes. They're not crossing borders. They're not meaningfully traveling to cities. They're not traveling for businesses. They're getting in cars. They're traveling to communities that are 200 miles away or less that are usually very small communities. They're staying in homes and they're staying longer, which is you've seen happening. I've mentioned it. A few people have rented that um, Airbnbs and, you know, in little town, in little countryside somewhere for a long, pretty long period of times just to kind of go and reconnect. You can Continues here, it says, Airbnb says business within countries has recovered to previous levels, but international travel remains off in a way that's devastating to the platform. He says, people one day get back to, people want, people will one day get back on planes, just he said. But on the things, but one of the things that I do think is a fairly permanent shift is the redistribution of where travelers go. Definitely agree with that one. He says in the following, in the past, with what he called mass tourism, travelers limited themselves to like 50 or 100 cities. You know, everyone goes to Rome, Paris, Lisbon, London. They stay in a hotel district. Uh, they get on a double decker bus. They wait in line to get a selfie in front of a landmark. He says, I think that's going to get smaller as a percentage of travel in the future. And I think it's going to get some what displaced or at least balanced by people visiting smaller communities and he continues here so chesky said he sees potential boom for national parks which is very very true i think that's going to definitely come back and he says uh, most people haven't got gone to them he said and it's pretty cheap you don't need to buy an airplane ticket you can usually drive because most people live within 200 miles of a park so i think you're going to start to see travel becoming more intimate more local smaller communities i can even speak for myself like i'm, I'm one of my goals once i've once post once lockdown's over and once lockdown gets eased one thing i'm gonna get sorted out is my haircut and get my you know my braids done which i'm really looking forward to i've been wanting to, i've been putting it off for years but well, another thing that I'm planning to do is get my driving license, right? I'm going to take my lessons as soon as lockdown's over. That's the first thing I'm going to do. And why? Because if I want to travel within inland, I'll need a car, right? Um, if I decide to move from London, I'll need a vehicle too. So, you know, I'll need a driving license. I want to hire a van. So the, the COVID has done that to me. It's made me local. It's made me kind of think, you know what? I actually need a car because I can't just rely on getting a train and getting on a plane to go travel somewhere. I need the ability to move around my area, move around my town, my local how a lot easier and the best way to do that is with a car so that's already shifted the way that i'm thinking about it and lastly it says i think a lot of people are going to realize they don't need to get on an airplane to have a meaning um i mean meet you in the office but now we're on zoom i definitely oh we have a meeting sorry yeah so definitely agree with that one we've seen that already with the co-working spaces essentially dwindling and most offices allowing their employees to work from home but yeah travel will not be the same which is i don't think a bad thing i think especially if you live in the uk man like if it, if you're not able to go to a festival outside the uk it doesn't really matter the amount of festivals that we have going on here in land is going to be insane the demand for those festivals is going to be so high once covid is over honestly especially um na yeah especially domestic um festivals i can imagine stuff like glass and briefs selling out five times over once lockdown's over especially if they get the same lineup they meant to have this year so 
um, I don't know, man. Let me know what changes you're, you're planning to have uh, post-COVID. What things you think have changed for the better or for the worse because of coronavirus. Let me know in the comments down below and I'll endeavour to get back to you.